take home message, you guys, is that you are going to see units of unsaturation in terms of double bonds, triple bonds, and rings like we just saw. So if you ever have unsaturation, it will be from one of those three things. Rings have one unit of unsaturation because they lose two hydrogens to close the ring. Double bonds, alkenes, have one unit of unsaturation because they have one multiple bond. Triple bonds, alkynes, have two units of unsaturation because they have two multiple bonds. Okay, so that was the general features of alkanes. Alkanes are just saturated hydrocarbons. I also showed you alkenes and alkynes as a comparison to alkanes to clarify what it means to be a saturated or an unsaturated hydrocarbon. We will get into alkenes and alkynes in later chapters, but for now, let's talk a little bit more in depth about alkanes. So let me go ahead and erase this. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the idea of isomers. And there are three types of isomers you're going to be dealing with in OCHEM. But hey, before we get into those three types, can anyone tell me what an isomer even is? Okay, well the whole idea behind isomers is that we're dealing with compounds that are the same, but not really. It's kind of like track housing, you guys. With track housing, all these houses are pretty much the same. They're made out of the same materials, except hey, maybe in one house the garage will be on the left side of the house, and in another house the garage will be on the right side. So these houses are all kind of the same because they're built with the same materials, but not really because they're arranged in slightly different ways, making them slightly different. And it's the same thing with compounds, you guys. Compounds can be built from the exact same atoms, but be arranged in slightly different ways, resulting in different versions. And these different versions are what we call isomers, okay? And there are three types of isomers you guys need to know, so let's write these down. Okay, so this first type of isomer is one you've already seen in GChem, and this is called a constitutional isomer. Let's write that down. So this first type this is a constitutional isomer. And we said that isomers are the same, but not really, right? They have slight differences. So hey, what is the difference between constitutional isomers? How do they differ? All right, so go ahead and write up here in parentheses that these constitutional isomers, these differ in connectivity. Connectivity. And because these differ in connectivity, that means these isomers are going to have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Let's write that down. These are going to have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. So in terms of the number and types of atoms you have, it's going to be the same, but they're going to have a different structural formula. The atoms are going to be connected in a different way. And let's see what I'm talking about, okay? So and let's just take, for example, a four carbon compound. Four carbon compound. And I'll draw this out the traditional way and the line angle way so you can start making the transition to the line angle method, okay? So, hey, here's the traditional method. And this is going to look like this. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. And the line angle way would look like this. Go ahead and dot your carbons there there, there, and there. 
And remember you guys, this is just two different ways of drawing out the same compound. They mean the same thing. This line angle form is just an abbreviated way of drawing out this traditional form, right? This carbon represents that carbon. This carbon represents that carbon. This carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, right? And remember, we don't draw out the hydrogens to keep things clear and less cluttered, right? Okay, so you'd say that this is an isomer of something like this. CH3 bonded to a CH, bonded to a CH3. Put the CH3 right there. And hey, let me draw the line angle form of this also for you. Put the carbon there, 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 and there. So this carbon is represented by this carbon. This carbon, this carbon. This carbon, this carbon, this carbon, this carbon. This carbon. So I've drawn these two compounds up here because they are isomers of a four carbon compound. So if you count the number of carbons and hydrogens in each compound, you'll realize that they both have the same amount. Okay, so hey, let's go ahead and do that. And in this first compound that we drew, it had one, two, three, four carbons. So this one has four carbons, and it also has three, five, seven, ten hydrogens. Ten hydrogens. And in this second compound, we had one, two, three, four carbons, and three, four, seven, ten hydrogens. So in terms of their molecular formulas, these guys are exactly the same. They both have the same number of carbons and hydrogens in each, right? Except, hey, they're connected a little differently. Here, a CH3 is connected to a CH2, connected to a CH2, connected to a CH3. In this second compound, we see a CH3 not connected to a CH2, like we saw in this guy. So we see a CH3 connected to a CH, connected to a CH3, with the CH3 branching off this middle carbon, right? So hopefully you guys can see that these two compounds are made of the same atoms, but those atoms are connected in slightly different ways. And we call these types of compounds constitutional isomers. They have the same molecular formula, but different structural formulas. But you guys should have seen this before in GCAM, so no big deal. Let's move on to the other two types of isomers, okay? And let me go ahead and erase all this so we can have more room to talk about these. Okay, so we're talking about the three different types of isomers. The first one that we talked about were constitutional isomers, and these differed in connectivity. And you probably saw that in GCHEM. But these next two types of isomers are exclusive to OCHEM, and they are known as conformational and stereoisomers. But hey, let's start off with conformational isomers first, all right? <laughs> 